Hello mates. What have you been up to lately? Working up? Preparing your shopping list for the holidays? Or maybe just resting up a bit? Let me guess. Playing video games and watching our content? That's Standy. And welcome back to our third and final part of our Money Hope and Despair event review. As the winter holidays approach and the bad weather starts to show its teeth, we will probably find ourselves more and more in front of a game, with a controller in hand. Or anything else that will tickle your interests. Whether for relaxation, or out of sheer lack of occupation. But let us not dwell more on the introductions, and get right to the subject. As usual. In this last part of our honest review of the Murney Halloween event, we will focus on some aspects not discussed so far in our previous episodes. Whether they are good or not, we will look at the things we loved and hated about the event, and, of course, in the end, we will give it our honest review final score. We will discuss here what Wargaming can do to improve the event and prepare it for the next year, as this one will probably stick a while with us. And that's good in our opinion, as the game mode has potential and is fun and engaging. It just needs a bit of love from the developers to shine even more and make it better and more functional. Maybe even more fun to play. So, let's get started. First, we'd like to talk about the things we loved and why. When the game mode worked as intended, it can be incredibly fun and a rewarding experience. Especially when you get in a decent team that knows what to do and how, and you don't need to babysit them like little children for the rest of the game. Fighting along the perfect team is the key to success, making the final fight with the immortal a captivating experience that keeps you hooked up for the whole battle. For every successful shot on the immortal, we could feel the tears of joy falling down our cheeks, as the health bar was going down and our teammates were caught in this fierce battle with this monstrosity. Trying to kill the immortal for the second time and sending it back to his lair, with only seconds remaining on the clock, trying to dodge his army of minions at the same time, can be for sure a tense and somehow chaotic experience. But this experience we liked. A lot, actually. It brings out the best parts of this game mode and even more. It shows that when things work as they should, you and your teammates can achieve so much more than just simply working together to get the mission done. You get to share a common joy with your team, a satisfaction that everything went according to plan, even if there were no plan, to begin with. Playing more than 120 battles here at the office, we discovered that the high difficulty level is most suited if you want to enjoy the game mode as it was intended. Low and medium levels did offer a somehow similar and enjoyable experience, but they leave a bitter taste in the mouth in the end as on both of them you don't get to enjoy the game mode at its maximum potential. It can certainly be hard to win on high difficulty, and for most of our games we ended up in ruins, losing the battle in different stages. Nice ram there Mr. Immortal. GG. But when you finally do it and win a game, it makes every lost battle seem like a warm-up, preparing yourself better for the next battles. This is what we really like to see more from Wargaming. Team-based game modes and gameplay, provided they work properly, of course. But we discussed more on this in the previous episode, which I recommend you watch if you haven't already. There are links below in the description to both part 1 and part 2 of our honest review, so you can check them out if you feel the need. The choice is yours, as usual. Prepare for battle, but concentrate on our mission objective. 
Next, we'd like to take a look at the things we didn't enjoy so much and how your teammates can do more harm than help. You see, in our games, we encountered countless times players that don't contribute in any way to the battle. On the contrary, they seemed to be doing the exact opposite, intentionally. Here, we have a hornet mate that refuses to play the game. Eventually being killed by the immortal himself. Stage 3. Same hornet, killed again by Mr. Immortal. I guess he really likes hugging the immortal, tracking us up in the process. We carried him the whole game right to stage 4. Unfortunately, he still does not want to play the game and gets destroyed again. Triple killed by the immortal. We had so many AFK, bots and players killing themselves or trying to ruin the game for everybody that we almost lost our hope at times. Can you please, sir, not play this mode anymore? That's just a suggestion. Do whatever you feel, but please don't play this game anymore. Maybe it's not for you. Now, let us take a look at how not to stick together and lose the game in stage 1. Notice how chaotic our teammates go all over the map, not sticking together and helping each other. That is not how you should do it. Even texting in chat to stay together and focus fire won't help much. Or indicating the next objective to attack. It's all in vain. And, of course, as you would expect, this game is over. As well as this one. Stage 1, again. And this one. Oh, look it's another one. All lost because we could not stick together. No comment. And the icing on the cake, stage 4, the last life of the immortal. We lost against the immortal with only 1205 health points left. Can you guess why? I'll help you a little. Because we didn't focus our firepower against him. And, of course, the occasional help we get from your teammates, pushing you with their turbo ability right into the hedgehog nest. Thanks Mr. Double, we really needed that. But wait, Mr. Double did it again, blocking the retreat of our grenadier, killing him in the process. Or at least, helping the immortal to kill him. You would assume correctly the chat will be full of wonderful messages about his inability to correctly control his tank and actually help the teammates, not kill them. But we can't show that here unfortunately. In any case, this battle is done, as you can see. Now, let's take a look at this game. Here, we entered the battle together with a platoon composed of four other tanks. You would think that's the perfect combination to win, at first sight. A platoon of four tanks is usually a good indicator that you are dealing with skilled players and determined to win the game. But, that is not the case here. This platoon entered the battle with only one purpose. To lose the fight, more precisely. We worked pretty well in the first phase with this platoon and everything seemed to be going well. We were confident that this battle could be won with the help of our formidable platoon mates. But then this happened. As we can see, at the last moment when we had to deliver the Miriam to move on to the next phase, our platoon mates decided to play a little with each other. Like little children. They intentionally blocked the delivery of Miriam and, as a result, the fight ended sooner than it started. We can't figure out why they would do that. The only possible explanation we have is to troll other players. On a positive note, we would like to point out that this was a somewhat isolated incident. We only encountered two such platoons during the games we played. The first platoon was AFK the whole fight. You can guess for yourself how well the fight with a single active player went.
similar to this one, in ruins. We have no problem showing you the nicknames of these great players and their clan tags. That's how things work here, you see. If you frack it up intentionally while we are watching you, please be sure we will shame you. We will not censor any nicknames or anything else here on this channel. That is a promise. And, who knows, maybe the clan commanders will see the behavior of these recruits and take action against them. Or maybe even wargaming, as this behavior directly violates the game rules and policies. From our point of view, the root of this problem, but also of others discussed here, is the game itself. And I'll explain why in the next part of the video, and how wargaming could repair and improve these game modes like Murney, as well as the game itself. You see, a lot of the issues discussed in this video have their roots in the aging mechanics of the game. The core mechanics of the game have not changed significantly since the launch of the game until now. Certainly, some changes and improvements have been made over the years to some game mechanics, but not in terms of preventing such situations as those presented here. These problems have been present for years at the core of the game, the most common occurrences being observed in random battles. What we see here with Murney is nothing new, for sure. The game mode uses the core mechanics of the game, after all. Inactive or malicious players, unbalanced platoons, toxic player base, lack of cooperation and involvement, all are present from the very beginning of the game. We have noticed these problems countless times over the years, to varying degrees. Regardless of the game mode you choose to play on. The root of the problem is that Wargaming has invested almost no resources and time in balancing the player classes all these years, choosing to stick with these outdated mechanics that shows its age, more and more. Veteran players but also some of the newcomers to the community have been shouting for years that changes and improvements to matchmaking mechanics are needed. In vain. The reporting system has been dysfunctional for years and does not help in any way to prevent such incidents. Sure, you can report a player, but after the damage has already been done. Which is often too late. They must prevent and limit as much as possible the occurrence of these incidents from the beginning, not after the fight is over. If they want to keep their player base alive, some changes are needed as a matter of urgency. Even today we do not have admins or supervisors present in the matches we play, something that is essential in a game that wants to be an MMORPG. But, we recognize that it can be difficult for Wargaming to adapt new game mechanics to help with these issues. And it will certainly infuriate some players. Hence the lack of interest and action on their part. As they do not want to upset certain players. After all, it's a money-making business, isn't it? But leaving the financial part aside, we promised that we would come up with a series of recommendations on the problems presented here. And that have repercussions on the game as a whole, not just on game modes like Murney. First, we need a matchmaking system based on PR, or personal rating, at least as a starting point in solving this problem. You can't have too high expectations from a player who has a personal rating of only 3000 or 4000, for example. Certainly, that player, no matter which side of the teams he plays, will not have a significant contribution to the game. On the contrary, it is very possible that the round will end badly for him and his team. This combination is even more dangerous as you have more players in your team below a certain personal rating threshold. From our point of view, this problem could be solved by normalizing the personal rating at team level, before the fight starts. As an example, if one team has approximately 75,000 personal rating points in total, the other team must be balanced to similar values. This would be a first improvement option that would bring together players from all categories, good or bad. No distinction will be made between them. At this moment what we got are games where a team is clearly superior in terms of players, and in the end, 
If we look at the rankings we can see that one team had better players and an overall personal rating considerably higher than the other team. In some cases the difference is absurd. Another option that can improve the matchmaker would be to limit the participation in the fight of players who do not meet a minimum threshold of personal rating. Say for example 5000 points. Let's be serious now, although it is not an option that many like, it is awful to play a match on tier 8, 9 or 10 with a team that has 3000 personal rating players or even weaker. Usually these are bots or beginner players with less than 1000 games played and should not be able to participate in high tier battles. It is very easy nowadays to buy a premium tier 8 tank from a freshly made account and get directly into high tiers, seeing such examples almost every day when we play this game. This is not normal and is one of the main problems of the current matchmaking system. The matchmaker should clearly differentiate novice players from experienced veterans and place each one where it is best suited for them. It would make life easier for both of them. Problem number one solved. Certainly, there would be multiple solutions to this problem and those described by us are just some recommendations to improve the gaming experience for everyone. As such, we will not dwell on this subject anymore and move on to the next one. Problem number two, which can be solved somewhat easily. For years, the game has lacked admins or supervisors who can assist and intervene where necessary. Any game, to our knowledge, that is part of the MMORPG genre provides such admins and game supervisors. To ensure that everything goes as smoothly as possible for everyone, not just a team. For now and in the past, the only way to contact Wargaming in case of a problem is by contacting the support team, outside the game, using the web portal on their page. This seems to be done intentionally, in mockery, from our point of view. Do you, Wargaming, really think this is the best option? We personally think not, and I'll explain why. The moment you get in touch with the support team, outside of the game, it means that the problem for which you are contacting them has already unfolded and nothing can be done to correct it. Sure, maybe the player you just complained about to the support team is going to bear the consequences, but that doesn't solve the root of the problem. In addition, it does not help you at all if the player will be held accountable sometime in the future. His actions have already taken place, and the damage has already been done and is irreversible. We got a little tired during the years we played this game of the inaction of wargaming and their ways of solving the problems indicated by the players. So we have the following recommendation in this regard. Please. Wargaming. Let's do something nice for everyone. For starters, provide a chat channel directly from the game interface where you can contact an admin or supervisor. We already know that there is this possibility in the game, it has been implemented for years, only it has not been used usefully so far. The only moderation you do is in the general chat window of the game, where occasionally we see an admin from time to time, strictly moderating the general chat window and that's it. Nothing more, nothing less. Make a dedicated chat channel where players can interact directly with an admin to report potential problems they face. That would be the first phase. The next step would be to implement a surveillance system on high tier battles, say 9 and 10, as these are the most important battles for a veteran player. This surveillance system, automated by AI, should be smart enough and well designed to recognize from the outset what players will be placed in the matchmaker. It should distinguish whether they are bots or simply beginners with insufficient personal rating to participate in that fight. We are sure that you have at your disposal the tools and data necessary to implement such a system. So use them. We guarantee that this would solve a good part of the problems that active players face. Active and paying players, by the way. But that's about it for now and on this subject. We could talk endlessly about what improvements Wargaming could make in this regard, but we will limit ourselves to those already described, for the time being. Problem number 3, Lack of Cooperation and Involvement. 
This problem again can be solved somewhat easily. In fact, it should have been resolved by now. It's not like the game has just been released, it's over one decade old. We can't help but give a little credit to Wargaming in this regard, because in recent years they have made improvements on this side. Insufficient, however, from our point of view. How many times have you faced a teammate or several who simply do not cooperate in any way? They go alone like lone wolves, in their crazy desire and hope that they will win the fight for the whole team, all by themselves. Only to become a ruin in the first minutes of the game. And moments later, to complain in the chat that the team let him down and is completely useless. Along with other less appropriate words for this video. How many times have you faced teammates who just don't want to help, even though they would have the perfect opportunity? Let me guess. Often. Honestly, there is no day when we play a game and do not meet inactive or uninvolved players. At least that's what we've been seeing for years, as well as the community. How many times have you faced heavy or light tank players camping at the bottom of the map, hoping they'll hit or spot something in the distance? Often, I suppose? These players, whether they are bots or not, should be penalized for not using the capabilities of the tanks they are playing with at the time. If you play a light tank, but you camp passively at the bottom of the map, how could you help your team to win? Do you spot much, mate? This is true for both heavy tank players who do similar things and the rest. Whether we are talking about medium tanks or tank destroyers. We take the artillery out of the equation here as its role is only supportive, not offensive. Of course they will camp at the bottom of the map. What else could they do, especially now that they have been ruined by war gaming? But let's talk about how we can change that, right? Very easy. Completing what Wargaming started a few years ago. If you remember, for those who have a long history already in the game, Wargaming tried to do something about it. They have introduced certain penalties for AFK players, reduced financial and experience gains for players who do not contribute enough to the fight, and so on. But they stopped here. From our point of view, they stopped prematurely. They could have done much more. Let me just give you an example that already exists in the game but is not used to its full potential. Similar to the ranked battles game mode, some roles could be added for each tank category. Those roles don't necessarily have to be the ones used in ranked battles mode, as some of them don't even fit in random battles. But they can easily adapt them to all game modes, no matter what mode it is. See? Problem number 3 is already partially solved practically. The only thing left to do is to adapt them to all game modes. But enough about this for now. We are nearing the end of our review and we have not yet given a note to the Murney Hope event. Finally, what we wanted to highlight is that the event itself is fun, captivating, and has potential, but is also full of technical issues and inherits many of the core problems of the base game. And these problems actually have deep roots that have not been dug up for a long time now. Basically, nowadays, Wargaming launches new game modes on an outdated architecture, which was clearly not designed for such things and needs some major adjustments and improvements. The community has been screaming for years about these core problems, but every time it gets ignored. And as a result, the player base keeps going down and down the drain. But this is a topic for another time that does not fit into our review. Maybe one day we will do a more detailed analysis of the core game and its current state in recent history, from the point of view of a veteran player with over 8 years of activity in this game. There would be a lot to analyze and discuss here and we think it would be interesting to take a closer look at how the game has developed over the years. It will certainly be a difficult mission, but one that we believe is worthwhile. But now is the time to give our final verdict to the Murney Hope event and finally end this review. It was not an easy task to review this event, that's for sure, 
as the more we played, the more problems or positive parts we discovered that we thought were worth integrating into this review. This is why it was divided into three separate parts, each focused on certain aspects. Therefore, the final verdict we give to the event is a 6. 6 out of 10. It is neither bad nor good, from our point of view. But we couldn't give more than that, given that the game mode was launched by Wargaming with multiple technical issues, discussed in the second part of our review, which weighed quite heavily on the final verdict. To be honest, the verdict was somewhat increased by about two points due to the fact that we recognize the potential of this game mode, as well as the fact that we personally found it extremely fun to play, when it works properly. It was a pleasant surprise for us to meet the Immortal again and have the opportunity to fight him and his modernized army of minions. Unlike Murney 13 where you were powerless in front of him and could only escape by running from this monstrosity. We acknowledge that Wargaming's improvements to the event this year have made it one of the most successful game modes to date released by them. At least from our point of view. But unfortunately, its potential is limited by the outdated mechanics of the core game, outdated mechanics that can be seen in many parts of the Murney Hope game mode. And that's a shame, because it basically means that as long as Wargaming doesn't bring major improvements and changes to the core game, any event they launch will suffer from these archaic mechanics. We can only hope that at some point they will listen more to the community and bring the much desired and necessary changes. Until then, the only thing we can do is look helplessly at their inaction and try to convince them of these much needed improvements. As a final note, I would like to highlight something we have noticed over time regarding the core game but also with Murney Hope and other events. None of the big content creators for this wonderful game have unearthed the mess hidden under this event, discussed its many technical problems, or review it properly. It is a pity that the community is not more involved in these matters as this is our only way to make the developers hear our pleas. If we don't make ourselves heard, then things will definitely not change. At least that's our honest opinion on this. In any case, this extended review has come to an end and we can only thank you for following us and appreciating our content. Until next time, stay safe, stay cool, and keep your hopes up. This is our recommendation for you.